Christmas in Australia is always hot and steamy. Pavlova with some fresh fruit is just a perfect refreshing dessert after a Christmas big meal. G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Sam's Home Kitchen where I bring to you budget-friendly recipes with sustainability in mind. So by the time this video goes up, we should be sitting around two weeks prior to Christmas and I hope this video, you can make some use out of it and help you make some decisions around your dessert or your Christmas feasts. So I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's been part of the journey. This channel is about two years old now and I just cracked 500 subscribers in the past couple of weeks. It has been an amazing journey for me personally. I have learned so much with my videography, with my storytelling, with a whole bunch of different skills that I never would have thought I would have to learn, had to acquire to make these videos. And it's every single one of you who watches my video who shares the same value as me that keeps me continuously inspired. I just want to say a big thank you to every single one of you. With 2023 approaching, my year is looking very busy. I am going to try my best to stick to a one video every two weeks kind of schedule, but there might be some format changes coming up. I filmed a coffee video just this morning. I don't know how it's going to turn out just yet, but it's going to be a lot of cinematic shots, a lot of B-roll, feel good kind of video, less of tutorial, less of me preaching definitely keep an eye out for that chuck a comment down below and let me know what you would like to see in the new year that is all i wanted to say and let's go make some pavlova first of all we're going to need some eggs just an egg white to make our meringue next some icing sugar to flavor the meringue if you don't have any icing sugar hanging around the house you can just use some granulated sugar and obliterate the sugar crystal structure in the blender Icing sugar has got exactly the same ingredients as normal sugar. The only difference is the texture and size of the particle. To add to the flavor, some imitation vanilla, vanilla extract or vanilla beans if you really want to go fancy. To make sure our meringue has got that marshmallow kind of texture on the inside, we're going to need some starch. I have some tapioca starch at home, but cornstarch works just fine too. One key ingredient when it comes to making meringue is vinegar. It helps with stabilizing the whipped egg white. You can substitute it with other acids like lemon juice too. Next, we're going to need some heavy cream to make our whipped cream. Last but not the least, some seasonal fruit. Nothing beats the ripest fruits in season. They are the best price possible with the most flavor. I've got some local mango grown in Queensland today, but feel free to pick whatever you have available to you. And that is all. As per always, feel free to take a screenshot of the ingredient list now and I always make it as scalable as possible working in whole numbers. With our pavlova, we're starting with the meringue today. Aiming to make a pavlova for two people, I'm using two eggs of egg white. First step is to separate our egg white from egg yolk. Almost every recipe I saw online suggests people to leave the eggs out until it's room temperature for easier whipping. Ain't nobody got time for that! However, when I just think about the fundamental, Rather than leaving eggs in the shell to come up to temperature, it makes a whole lot more sense to me to just crack the eggs, separate them, and use the conductability of our mixing bowl to spread out the coolness of the eggs. In return, bring our egg white up to temperature in a way shorter time frame. Grab a container to put our egg yolk away for other recipes. They can be used for mayonnaise, lemon curd, and so many other wonderful things. Crack the egg and straight into the bowl. Remember to compost our eggshells. Put our finger in and gently scoop out the egg yolk. Slow and steady goes a long way here. Pull off as much of the stringy bits as possible and only remove the egg yolk from the mixture. Second egg in and we'll do the same. If you want to be extra, extra, extra careful here, it's recommended to crack your egg into a separate bowl so we can guarantee that even if the egg yolk breaks, we're not contaminating the main mixture. Now we got both egg yolks out, put the container away and it's just screaming carbonara for dinner now. With our egg white in our mixing bowl, now we want to measure out a couple of grams of vinegar. The purpose of the vinegar is to help with the beating of egg white and make it easier to hold its beaten form and not collapse too easily. 
Once we got our egg white and vinegar measured out, that's the main ingredient of our meringue. To keep the recipe super simple and equipment to minimum, I'm going to do the whipping by hand. Grab our tiny whisk and start by doing a forward and backward motion in the egg white. Continue the motion until egg white starts to bubble up. We are on the right track here. Keep going for just about 3 hours and voila, it's that simple. We've got our egg white whipped up into a creamy and luxury texture. It's super easy and not tiring at all. Nah, I hope I haven't lost you yet. That was a joke in case you missed it. To save the sweat and tears, use a stand mixer or a handheld mixer. Mixing bowl in and whisk in. Raise the bowl in position and we want to start whisking at a lower speed by breaking the egg white up first. Once we can see big bubbles like this, we can increase the beating speed to high and let the machine do its thing. While the machine slaves away, we want to measure out 80 grams of icing sugar per 2 eggs or 40 grams per egg. This jar of icing sugar was inherited from my sister-in-law due to her moving interstate. As you can see, they look like some sad orphan just clumping together to tough it out. But don't worry, with some love and brute forces, we can break them up again and make it fluffy and dissolvable. Beat the eggs until it's at a soft pea kind of situation. Soft peak is essentially when you can visibly see some microform, but the egg white foam is still nice and liquidy, just like what you can see here. Put the mixer back on full speed and now start adding the icing sugar one spoon at a time. Oh, I tell you what, this reminds me so much of my school days. There's spoon feeding information and beating. The entire education system when I was growing up was basically, sorry, I digress. <laughs> Get all of the icing sugar in and beat the egg white at full speed until it's smooth and silky. We want to reach a texture called Stiff Peak. This is also when we add in about 5 grams of imitation vanilla. Stiff Peak is when we flip the whisk upside down and the pointy bit defies gravity. When we use our fingers to create more peaks, they stand up to the test as well. I'm pretty happy with the texture here, so next is to clean up the whisk, scrape and scrape as always, and then tidy up our bowl a bit with our spatula. I don't have a big enough baking tray at home, but I found pizza tray basically does the same thing here. Lay out the reusable baking sheet and it's just as good if not better. Now, with our whipped egg white, add in about a tablespoon or 8 grams of starch to achieve a marshmallow-like texture on the inside of our pavlova. We just need to gently fold the starch in, no whisking required here. Once all done, it's time to form our meringue. Aim for the center of the tray and we want to pile it up instead of spread it out. Keep it as tight as possible to put into a cake form. Make sure we're scraping the bowl as clean as possible. Have I ever mentioned spatula is my absolute favorite tool in the kitchen apart from you? Once all of our egg white is tipped out, next we want to shape it. Use the same spatula and shape it into a circular cylinder aka cake shape to start with. My pizza tray is a bit warped, but it's perfect here because I can just spin it to help with shaping. You can very well stop here when you get a rough cake shape, but why would you when you can go all out to make it as pretty as you can? I have no idea what this technique is called, but kind of just drag the egg white from the bottom to the top at an angle to make it look pretty. Next, scoop in the top of the meringue and make a hole to allow room for whipped cream later on. Clean up the spatula and scrape clean the meringue back into itself. To make the vortex design of the cake more pronounced, I used the back of the tablespoon to repeat the same motion from earlier. Now, it's finally ready for the oven. We want to have the oven preheated at 130 degrees Celsius on fan force. Put the meringue in once up to temperature. We want to cook it at 130 for 10 minutes and then drop it to 100 and bake for 90 minutes. It's a low and slow process to make sure the meringue doesn't deflate or crack. Once time is up, turn the oven off and leave the oven door open with a gap to start cooling down the pavlova. Make sure we don't touch it or take it out of the oven until it's fully cooled down. While the meringue is cooling off, we can get the rest of the ingredients ready. Judging by the size, I'm just using one cheek of mango. Scoop out the flesh with a spoon. Cut the mango into about 1cm thick pieces, into strips and into cubes. Put them in a bowl and set aside for later use. You obviously don't have to use mango, any seasonal fruits that is available is the best in flavour and cheapest in price. The meringue looks to be all set now, so I pull it out of the oven. 
I'm super stoked with how it turned out, it being my first ever attempt making a pavlova. With using reusable baking paper, it's super easy to pull the meringue off the sheet and all we need to do is to give it a wash and it's good for the next bake. It's a much more sustainable option compared to single use baking papers. Now we just got one last ingredient before we can put everything together. Cream. Get out the mixer again and we want to weigh out 100 grams of heavy cream for today's portion. The key to successful whipped cream is to make sure that it's nice and cold, so don't leave the cream out for too long, especially in summer. Add a tablespoon of icing sugar to flavour, and we whip the heavy cream on high speed until it looks something like this, a soft-ish whipped cream kind of texture. Get the whisk and bowl off the mixer. You know the whipped cream is ready when you flip the bowl over your head and your hair is still dry. <laughs> Give the whisk a scrapey scrape as always, and it's assembly time. I was too excited to put all these together, and I got ahead of myself, only to find out that I had way more cream than I had room to fit. I realized I missed a very important step, so cream off again. Grab our spoon again, and the secret here is to crack the top of the little bowl we created on top of the meringue. Just break the top gently, and let it collapse in a little bit. We now have a little compartment to store all of the delicious whipped cream. Shape it a bit, and then it's time to top it off with our amazing Queensland Mango. The cost breakdown is as below. Two eggs at $3.80 a dozen equals to 63.3 cent. 100 grams of heavy cream at $7 a kilo equals to 70 cent. 100 grams of icing sugar at $3.60 a kilo equals to 36 cent. 5 grams of imitation vanilla at $10 a kilo equals to 5 cent. 8 grams of tapioca starch at $2 a kilo equals to 0.16 cent. 2 grams of vinegar is like nothing. One third of a mango at 99 cents each equals to 33 cent. So altogether, a pavlova that serves 2 to 4 people costs it as around $2 and 7.5 cent to make. One of these costs $3.50 and you still need to add whipped cream and fruit. Or if you want to buy pre-made pavlova, they are at least 10 to $15. Alright, and there we have it. That is our uh, pavlova done right here. Honestly, as a not super frequent baker, this is actually a really easy recipe to follow. I hope I didn't scare you away with the tiny whisk joke that I put on earlier. The total active time to make pavlova, honestly, it's 30 minutes flat. All that is needed is a little bit of patience for it to cook and cool down in the oven. All right, I'm going to dive in and just let you know how it tastes like. The meringue is nice and crispy on the outside, but on the inside, with the help of starch, makes it really marshmallowy. And then the fresh fruit on top just makes it super refreshing. With Christmas approaching, this is super festive and just a classic Australian Christmas uh, dessert. Utilize our local produce mango that's grown in Queensland. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you make this for Christmas. If I don't see you again before Christmas, Merry Christmas and enjoy a really well-deserved break and Happy New Year. I will see you before Christmas or in the new year.